I don't know how we're going to do this, but let's talk about every single damn book that I read this year. Hey guys, what's up? It's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. If you're from TikTok, I'm sorry. I am very excited to do this video. This is going to be a big wrap up of the 80 eight books that I read this year because I just finished one this morning. I don't want to fumble around too long because it's going to be a long enough video as it is. Let's just get right on into it. No mucking around. Let's go. So the very first book that I read this year was People We Meet on Vacation. This is the UK edition. It's called You and Me on Vacation. I hate it. Um, I honestly, the only thing I remember about this is this is like second chance, friends to lovers. I did really like this. I gave it four stars and I think I read this like when I was on a cruise. The next book I read was The Sweet Spot and I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I can't remember anything about this except that it was sort of like single parent and this guy hires her to manage this little like cabin hotel he's got going on. I gave it two stars. I just felt like there was not enough meaty plot for me to even remember it. I then read Love, Hate and Clickbait. Now this was an MM romance. Y'all know that's my bread and butter. One of my besties recommended me this and I just, I gave it three stars because I think it's a cardinal sin. There's like a bit where someone betrays someone when they could have, again, miscommunication. And I'm just like, you, you could have avoided that. You know what I mean? I then started the Bridgerton series. Now prior to this, I had only read Romancing Mr. Bridgerton because I love Colin and Penelope. But this year I went to the Lifeline Book Fest and I said, I'm finding every one of these damn books. So I started. The Duke and I, which was Simon and Daphne's uh, story. I actually quite liked the show much more than the book. I think Simon was a dick in the book. I still gave it four stars. The Viscount Who Loved Me. This was obviously Anthony and Kate. Um, I liked the show again a lot more than the book. I think it was a lot weirder and I just didn't gel with the two of them as much as I wanted to. Third book is Benedict's book, which is an offer from a gentleman. Now, other than Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, this one is my favorite from the series. Five stars. This is like a Cinderella inspired retelling and I just loved it. Of course, I had to do a reread of Romancing Mr. Bridgerton because like I said, Colin and Penelope are my favorites. I think people are like, especially people who watch the show only, they don't realize the depth of this relationship. When you read the book, like it's chef's kiss. It's one of my favorite books. It's probably my most reread book and I will just sing its praises until the cows come home. Seriously. Um, to Sir Philip with Love was Eloise's story and I did not like this. I did not like this. It was bad, girl. Two stars. I don't like the MMC. Love Eloise. She could have done so much better. Then I have When He Was Wicked, which is Francesca's story. And I did like this one. This was like Francesca had a husband. He passes away and then she ends up marrying this guy's cousin. I gave it three stars. I then read It's In His Kiss, which is Hyacinth's story. This was another one of my favorites, like probably top three in the whole series. Um, this one had like a little bit of a mystery plot to it, which I really liked. And we got to see a lot more of Hyacinth than we have in the other books, obviously. I gave it four stars. Finally finishing off Bridgerton was Gregory's story. This is the last one. I gave it four stars. Um, I don't honestly remember too much about the plot other than he tries to sabotage this girl that he loves wedding. Um, but I know that I liked it. <laughs> Next is Hooked by Emily McIntyre, which is the first book in the Never After series, which I loved. I love Peter Pan. Y'all, the 2003 version of Peter Pan will forever be one of my Roman Empire movies. Basically, this whole series, the premise is the retelling where the villain gets the girl. And this was Hook and Wendy, and I loved it. Four stars. I then have Marriage for One by Ella Mays. This is obviously a marriage of convenience, and I really like this. I read To Love Jason Thorne last year. I still think that's my favorite so far that I've read from her, but this was Slow Burn Excellency, four stars. This is one that I read that I rated lower when I finished it, but upon thinking about it, it like got the five star. And it's Verity by Colleen Hoover, which is my first thriller that I'd read by Colleen Hoover. And y'all, this is what she needs to write. This is so much better than her romances. I devoured this. I was shook. I read it in three hours. I cannot recommend it enough five stars. Then I have The Taking of Jake Livingston, which I DNF'd. One star, really, really boring. I just, I'm so sorry. I didn't like it. And for some reason, I can't find this book either, but it's The Silent Patient. And I really did like this. I did guess the plot twist. I think it was a little bit too obvious. So for that reason, four stars. I then read what was at the time my first five star read, but it was The Fine Print by Lauren Asher, first book in Dreamland Billionaires. And guys, this was so good. This was Grumpy Sunshine, Workplace. It was so, so good. I love this series so much and it just holds a very special place in my heart. I then read Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. Now you guys, this is very controversial. It was so, so good. I don't care what any of you guys say, like sports romance, college romance, reverse Grumpy Sunshine, like it was so good. 
Then there was a Not So Meat Cute by Megan Quinn, which I did not enjoy because it gave me way too much secondhand embarrassment and I couldn't deal with it one star. Then I read Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher, which is my favorite book from Dreamland Billionaires. I think it was my fifth favorite book of the year. This is Marriage of Convenience, Forced Proximity. Declan Kane can get it any day of the week. Five stars. I finished off the series with Final Offer, which I gave 4.5 stars. I just think it didn't hit as much as the other two. I think I didn't like Alana. That was the issue I had with this book and it was a little bit too long. It could have been shorter. I then read The Song of Achilles, which was my biggest surprise of this year because I originally was gonna DNF the shit out of this book. I was gonna DNF, but I said no. I can't believe that I actually ended up loving this. I like literally looked at walls for days and it was the Kickstarter for my week full of depressing romance books. If someone starts another motorbike outside my house, I'll be swinging for damages. I then decided to do a challenge where I read seven sad books in seven days. And we started off with the worst one I could have possibly done. And it was A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole, which literally destroyed me. In a way, I literally cannot explain to you guys, this fucked me up on another level. Guys, treasure your life and treasure every day because this book, Five stars, holy shit. I then read Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover, which I have since given away because I just didn't like it. Three stars, had no depth, boring. I think my friend just bought Wildfire. Um, One True Loves, Taylor Jenkins Read, five stars. It really plays on this premise of like, what would you do if you had the choice between the love of your life and a new love? Like, I can't tell you too much about it, you should just read it. It's very sad and beautiful. I've also given away this next book, It's Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. I really didn't like this. Um, I just think sexual manipulation was used in the worst way possible. Um, two stars. Another DNF of the year was Priest by Sierra Simone. It really took me seven months to read this and I still didn't finish it. It was not it. I was about this close to the end and I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. And then we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I really actually enjoyed. I gave it four stars. I think it just like missed the hype. A lot of people were telling me this was like their favorite book of all time. And I don't understand, but it was still very well done and I liked it. Then I did the best thing I could have ever done and I got a Kindle. I got a Kindle and we went down a very dark and doomy path. First of all, we read Credence. We read Credence because y'all wouldn't stop talking about it. And listen up y'all. So I liked this book and I really was like, some of these scenes will live rent free in my head till the end of my days. I just don't like who she ended up picking. It was nasty. She could have, she should have picked Uncle Jake. I'm sorry, four stars. I read Run on Red, which was a little thriller novella. And y'all, this was anxiety in a book. Like I have never been so on edge. And then the ending was just like, not it. I felt like, like it read well, it read like a movie, if that makes sense. But it was just too much anxiety for what I had to endure. I then read Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan, which was such a beautiful, beautiful depiction of silent love. I love it very, very much. I gave it four and a half stars. It was very sad, maybe, maybe sub my eyes out. Then a book I despise, They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Guys, this was so overhyped. Why, why do y'all like this book? Like I'm being so for real. Why do y'all like this book? Nothing happened, the whole book. Oh my God, one star. I then read the second book in the Addicted Callaway series, which is Ricochet, which I really liked. I am really struggling with this series because I'm actually more invested in like Rose and Connor and Rike and Daisy rather than Lily and Lo. I have bought Addicted for now. And if I finish that and I'm still not invested, I won't be continuing. But yeah, I still like this. Daisy makes me laugh. Four stars. Then we've got Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas, which I freaking loved so much. This was my first, other than like Credence, like taboo-esque romance. And y'all, it was so good. 19 year age gap, five stars. Seriously, so freaking good. I then read Three Swedish Mountain Men, which again, on my Kindle, I gave it three and a half stars. It was another Why Choose, which I was I actually thought was really cute and really cute for winter. I then started my favorite series of this year and it was the Chestnut Spring series. And the first book was Flawless, which really always holds such a special place in my heart. This is about a bad boy bull rider who basically pulls a really shitty PR stunt. His manager goes, you need to pull your head in, mate. I'm sending you a babysitter. Oh, Rhett Eaton. Five stars. The book literally lives up to the name. It is flawless. There are no faults. May was really the best month, guys. I read Haunting Adeline by H.G. Carlton. When I started this book, I said, what am I doing? What am I reading? Like, there were moments where I was like, I'm going to stop. 
I'm going to put it down because I'm going to hell. You know, like I am going to need to repent for my sins. But I finished Haunting Adeline and I was hooked. And I said, I need the second one right now. And thank God for Kindle Unlimited, because if I had like ordered the first one in paperback and then had to wait for the other one to arrive, I would have passed away. Four stars for Haunting Adeline. And then I read Hunting Adeline. And I have never been the same. I just cannot put into words how much I fucking love this book. How much I love this duet. I... I felt physically sick. I was crying. I was hyperventilating. I was laughing. I was going on this roller coaster of emotions with Zayd and Addy. And it was my favorite book of this year. I never stopped thinking about it. Read it. Finally finished off with Satan's Affair, which is actually a prequel novella about one of my favorite female characters, Sibby, who appears in the Cat and Mouse duet. This was intense, y'all. And if I had not read um, the Cat and Mouse duet prior to reading this, I probably would have said, what the fuck am I reading? It was nasty, but you get it if you love Sibby. So I gave it three and a half stars because I love that crazy girl. I then read Twisted Lies and finished off the Twisted series. I gave it 4.75 stars only because no one is touching Reese and Bridget. You know what I mean? Wasn't as good as them. Then I read King of Wrath, which is the first book in the Kings of Sin series. This is Dante and Vivian, and I did like this. I only gave it 3.75 stars because I think Vivian really didn't gel well with me. I didn't really like her. But Dante, that limo scene, boy. Another book that I despise with my entire being. Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. These two people should not be together. I'm really sorry, but they should not be together. After what they went through, they could have healed individually or healed as friends, but not together, especially when, you know, her sister's involved. One star, awful. And then I read King of Pride, which is book two in Kings of Sin, which I really, really loved. This is like forbidden romance. I gave it 4.5 stars. I really liked it. I continued on with the Never After series and I read Scarred by Emily McIntyre. Now this was a Lion King retelling. Oh, I loved this one. This was five stars, one of the strongest in the series. Obviously, we all saw that Queen Charlotte became a show this year, so I read the book and I was not disappointed. I loved this. I cried. Definitely elaborated on a lot of the, you know, key elements from the show. And I just farmed George. 4.75 stars. I read another H.D. Carlton book, which was Does It Hurt? This is... Oh my god, such a good dark romance. Enemies to lovers, the most enemies to lovers you've probably ever seen other than another book that I'll talk about later. I loved this, 4.75 stars. I then read a book that I never shut up about because it's my fucking favorite and it's Heartless by Elsie Silva. Oh my god, I, if you guys follow me on TikTok, one, I'm sorry. Two, you guys know that I talk about this till the damn cows come home. I need a man like Cade Eaton. It's not funny. He is amazing. I love this book so much. If you take any recommendation from me, this book right here. Five stars. I read There Are No Saints by Sophie Lark. I hated this, especially after reading Cat and Mouse. I was like, this is a knockoff. What the MMC does to this chick at the beginning of the book, unforgivable. And I'm saying that as someone who loved Cat and Mouse. It was nasty. Two stars. I then read all five Mind F novellas by S.T. Abbey. This bad boy right here. Oh my God. The first three I actually rated between three and a half to four stars, but the last two, oh my God. This series is so good. It's like, if you love Criminal Minds, like, it's about a serial unaliver who falls in love with the FBI agent who's working on her case. And if that doesn't suck you in, I don't know what else will. Read the damn thing. Check your trigger warnings, please. I read You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogel, which really surprised me. I loved this. This was fun, silly. It was very cute second chance romance. Four and a half stars. I read The Charm Offensive, which I actually really loved. I've had this for a while. One of my besties read this and she was like, it's not that good. And I was like, no, but let me read it. I loved this. Gay reality TV show. So slay. 4.25 stars. Then I read Moments of Malevolence, which was actually sent to me. I did really like this. I just think I didn't like the MMC that much. And that's why it brought it down to a three and a half star. I then read Powerless, which is book three in Chestnut Springs, which was Jasper and Sloan. All of these books are so good. This was a 4.75 star only because I think I didn't really love like the friends to lovers element. There wasn't as much high stakes, but I still really love this book. And like both of them were, ugh, I love it. Then I read Reckless, which is book four. Oh my God. I'm not a massive fan of accidental pregnancy, but this was done in such a good way. Theo Silva, like shut up. Reverse Grumpy Sunshine, loved it. Five stars. 
Then I read Wretched by Emily McIntyre, another Never After book. This one was a Wizard of Oz retelling where we had like the Wicked Witch was the uh, female main character, which was so slay. I really liked this one. It was more like drug cartel, mafia style. I gave it 4.25 stars. I then did a reread of what was my favorite book. I think it still is. The movie really has tainted this for me and I'm really still struggling and trying to come to terms with the fact that the movie has tainted this book for me. I reread Red, White and Royal Blue in time for the film to come out. If you guys know me, I have about six copies, six different copies of this book because I love it so much. And it really was my favorite book. The movie has just really tainted it for me, but it's always a five star. And if anybody ever asked me on the street, like what's my favorite book, I will tell them this. And I will say, don't fucking watch the movie. I then read a new little uh, small town romance that I heard about, which was uh, Protecting You by Claire Kingsley. This is the first book in the Bailey Brothers series. I do have the others, I just haven't read them yet. It's a really small little Kickstarter novella and I actually love this because the ending had me shook. I was expecting some fluffy, really cute, uh, you know, setup, and I was shook at the end. I was damn shook. Four and a half stars. I then have Ignite by Melanie Harlow. This is the first book I read by Melanie Harlow and this was a single dad fire fighter romance the way this book opens is so slay like this chick moves into this new apartment her fire alarm goes off and the sexy firefighter from next door come next door hello comes over to save the day i loved this four stars also in preparation for august was a reread of heartstopper volume three because season two of heartstopper came out and its primary focus was on this one here which is the class trip to paris i just really wanted to reread this so that i could tab the scene so when i like sat down and watched the show i had it all there for me to reference you know what i mean i love nick and charlie so much they are my favorite you can see the leaves over there the leaves are all over my room i love them so much five stars the big boy who's not even going to come off the shelf. I read fourth wing. I read fourth wing. Five damn stars. I literally sobbed. I don't read fantasy that often. When I was a kid, yes, I loved me some fantasy. As an adult, absolutely not because boring was the spice, was the flavor. This was phenomenal. I have two different copies of it now. I sobbed uncontrollably at the end of this book. Like it was just that fucking good read it. And then I read Nick and Charlie again, a reread, which is a cute little novella that takes place before Nick goes away to university. It's where they basically have their big massive fight, their first big massive fight that sort of gets them to contemplate if their relationship is strong enough past high school. I love it. Five stars. Then I read Heartstopper Volume 4, which I thought was what season three is going to be about, but I now found out that it's going to cover this. Volume 5, and the This Winter novella, which is really exciting too. This one is probably the most content heavy and like emotional and I just, this one is my favorite. Five stars. I read Confess by Colleen Hoover because my bestie Sienna said, girl, you gotta read this. And I said, I can't. Coho's disappointed me too many times. She said, fucking read it. And I said, okay, I'll read it. I was not disappointed. This was actually one of her best and it's not talked about enough. Four and a half stars. This is an interesting one, y'all. Done and Dusted, Lila Sage. A big book talk, popular one this year. And I think after reading Chestnut Springs, I just felt like the plot of this was not very strong. I will say there is a scene in an office with some whiskey and some spitting that I was very shocked to read in this. And I loved it and it really did like bump the book up for me but otherwise it just felt really flat. But I still gave it 4.25 stars because I love love. Then I read Twisted, which was my favorite book out of the Never After series. This is an Aladdin retelling and Julian, I love this one, five stars. I then finished the Never After series to date, I should say, and I read Crossed, which is a Hunchback of Notre Dame retelling. This one was my least favorite. I think I gave it 3.75 stars. It just, I don't know, it felt a bit rushed. It just was not my favorite. Then I read Praise by Sarah Kate and I was not disappointed. I read this on a plane and if anybody's looked inside this book, you'll know that the chapter titles are very, very spicy. And I read this on a plane and I'm sitting next to my mom and I'm like, this is my first like sub dom book and I loved it. I think I gave this four stars. Then I read Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey. I was actually sent this, which was so, so lovely. This one also has a lot of mixed reviews. I think that it sort of lacked a lot of stakes. It was a bit rushed, but I gave it four stars and I honestly really enjoyed it. I'm sorry. Then I started the Windy City series. I read Mile High, which I loved. Liz Tom Ford, you'll, you'll see in a bit. She has become one of my new faves. I think 
for the size of this book I really didn't get bored the pacing was really great I just love these books I gave it 4.75 stars another very popular book Divine Rivals Rebecca Ross this is a lot of people's bread and butter they loved it to pieces a lot of people were like this is better than fourth wing and I was like okay girl let me read her I think that the love story of this is five stars I think the plot is not for that reason I gave it four and a half stars um I know the second book is gonna be five stars because I read the synopsis and I love the memory loss trope I just know it's gonna be fire then I read wildfire by Hannah Grace now this takes the cake it's my favorite out of the series so far I loved it so much I really related to Aurora I loved these two you know we love a little bit of family trauma bonding you know what I mean five stars I read Meant to Be by Lauren Jackson. I was actually sent this by Lauren and Penguins. So thank you very much. Um, this is Lauren's debut novel and I really liked it. I just feel like I couldn't um, connect with the characters on a personal level. The spice was immaculate. For that reason, I gave it 3.75 stars. I then finished Chestnut Springs. And guys, this one pains me because I was looking forward to this one so much. And it was Hopeless by Elsie Silver, which was Bo's story. And it got 4.75 stars. The spice was insane. Probably the spiciest out of the whole series. But I, um, again, I didn't like uh, the MMC. I think she was much too immature for Bo. And I think maybe their like story as a couple didn't have high enough stakes. I read The Deal by Elle Kennedy, which I've had this sitting on my shelf for so freaking long. I'm glad that I read it because it was super fast paced, really cute, fluffy. Like I could tell it was definitely written in like 2012, but I love the Tudor trope. So loved this four stars. Then I read Off to the Races by Elsie Silver and I really liked this. It was an enemies to lovers, but it just was missing something. And it's hard when I finished Chestnut Springs when that was such a high high for me. I only gave it 3.75 stars. I read The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata. This was my first book by Mariana Zapata and she is the queen of slow burn. I swear to God. This was almost perfect, almost five stars. The reason it didn't get the five star from me is because I had to wait until seven pages before the end, before they banged. And I just think that is a cardinal sin. So for that reason, 4.75 stars, but it is so worth the read. I then read King of Greed, which is book three in Kings of Sin. This is my favorite one so far. This was a marriage on the rocks, second chance romance type of vibe. I think I gave it 4.75 stars. There she is. I read Iron Flame, book two in, I don't even know, the Empyrean series. I really don't know how to say that. Yeah, I love this. I don't care what anybody says. A lot of people were like, it was not as good as Fourth Wing. I don't care what you say. I loved it. I stared at walls for weeks afterwards. And if I don't get it resolved soon, Rebecca, you will be receiving my therapy bill. Five stars. Then I read Radio Silence by Alice Oseman and I really, really loved this. This had some really good representation that I personally related to and loved. I just think all of Alice's books are so informative and wonderful and made, makes me just feel like a kid again and I just love it. Then I read one of my most anticipated releases of the year, which was Heartstopper Volume 5. Now, out of all the Heartstoppers I've shown you in the video, look, I read, those are all rereads. Like, I've read everything else by Alice last year. This was the new one and I am so proud of Charlie Spring. Nobody understands how proud I am of Charlie Spring. The am I English? No. This was like the biggest growth book for both of them and I just loved it. Five stars. I then read A Christmas Cupid which was actually book fairy to me so thank you very much. It's very cute little short novella. It started out really strong but I don't like like insta lovey after sex like it's just not the vibe. I get it's a novella but like no Cardinal Sin. Two and a half stars. Then I read The Right Move by Liz Tomford, and guys, this is such a fucking good book. I just can't explain to you how much I love this. This man has set the bar through the roof, and I don't know if I'll ever find another one. Like, I, 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 like. Indy, can you fight? Because this is another, like, beautiful example of silent love. So I then reread This Winter, which is a nice Christmas novella, again, part of Heartstopper. Um, it does have three POVs. We follow Tori, Charlie, and uh, Oliver, Spring, on Christmas Day. And we get to see a little bit of angst, and we get to see sort of what their family is like during um, Christmas Day. Four stars. The very last book that I read in 2023 was one that I was being yelled at to read. One that y'all were like, Belle, why have you not read this yet? And I said, because I'm scared. A Court of Thorns and Roses. Look how old this is. I have the original, original fucking cover of this because I bought it that long ago and I never, ever read it. Obviously, it's like the biggest thing since sliced bread now. And everyone was like, how have you not read Akata yet? It's amazing. Guys, this was not as good as you said it was going to be. 
This was three stars and I'm really sorry and I'll tell you why. I think it's because I know that I'm not supposed to like Tamlin, but the other part of it was that it was too, too close to Beauty and the Beast. Like I know it's supposed to be an inspired retelling, but it was too close to the story. I predicted so much of it. That riddle at the end, girl, I knew, I knew what the answer was when she fucking said it. And I'm like, Pharaoh, why have you not figured it out yet? Tell me why I should read Akamath, because like, this ain't it. Woo! Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you for sitting through and listening to me ramble about these books. Oh my god. How did you all go this year? I hope you had a wonderful reading year. Um, I'm very, very excited for 2024. If you guys don't already, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. I'm about to get a whole new setup in January for YouTube. I'm gonna be a lot more consistent. Feel free to follow me on Instagram and on YouTube if you wanna keep updated with me. But if not, I will say bye for now and I will see you all soon. Bye.